Okay, uh, first of all, apologies for the yapping dogs because my neighbors have the most annoying dogs in the world. Uh, this is a rough and quick overview of my DIY electrical system, more so for help. I've I'm, I'm got several questions and things that I'm just running into and I'm hoping I can get a few people watching this that know what they're doing. Uh, but also maybe for ideas. This is a 2023 Transit Trail, and uh, I have done this system mostly myself with slash the help of friends. I, disclaimer, hate electrical and don't know what I'm doing at all, and it makes my brain turn into goo anytime I'm dealing with any of this stuff. So I've tried to go off... Um, some references that I found online, some wiring diagrams and and schematics and other things. And there's things I probably would have changed, like uh, this ginormous, I don't even know what size it is anymore, uh, two-aught, one-aught cable um, that one of the schematics called for. I mean, it's just ridiculous. <sighs> Anyway, um, okay, so starting here, MultiPlus 2, Victron, I'm doing a 12 volt system, the 3000, uh, 120 amp. Um, I mounted mine sideways. I read a little bit online and, you know, I didn't, I saw some stuff about people saying that it probably wasn't a big deal in some of the forums, um, that the main thing is cooling. So yeah, I decided to mount it sideways. Um, I, I guess we'll just, Kind of go through the system so um, the inverter is connected and here's the very first question um, one of the schematics called for doubling up on the cables um, so I've got two negatives and two positives running up here into the corner I've got two links distributors mounted up top because that was the most ideal I don't have a ton of space in here um, so I don't know, can I get away, the question is, with just one set of cables? Um, I am doing, let me bring you up and over here. I've got, look how big and beefy and chunky those cables are, it's just ridiculous. Um, so these are Lion Energy 105 amp hour lithium batteries. I've got six of them, which makes 630 amp hours total. When I called Lion Energy, they told me that it was not ideal to run all six of them together, so I ran two separate banks. That is why I've got the two switches here, the two grounds coming in, and uh, those all connect up into the bus bars. Let me fix the... Um, just on the ends here. Now I am missing the shunt and I did big shout out to Explorers Life and their awesome Q&A's they do. He rec he said it would be fine to run the shunt even though the shunt, sa the shunt says uh, 500 amps right there. Um, that That's like the max amperage that it can take and it's never really actually taking that all at once. So I will be mounting the shunt uh, kind of right up here and then connecting the battery negatives into the shunt and then from the shunt over into the bus bar um, So yeah, I guess first question is can I get away with removing one set of these cables and open up one of the uh, ports on the bus bar Second question is kind of a big question is I have no idea what size uh, mega fuses to run on <laughs> on these uh, two distributors. So these two first ones are for the inverter. Um, this one is for my Dometic RTX 2000 air conditioning unit. I don't know what size to run for that. If anybody can tell me, I'd appreciate it. Uh, this one is for my 12 volt little fuse panel. So if anyone can let me know what size mega fuse I should be running for that, that would be helpful. And then um, these two are for my solar chargers. I've got um, a few different sizes of panels up top, and so I'm running two separate chargers. Both are MPPT 130s. I don't know if that's correct. I don't know if I got two big of ones and didn't need to. I don't really care at this point. Um, 
but if I definitely need to switch those out, let me know. So one of them is running a 200 watt panel, another one is running a um, 250 watt panels. And one other thing is I do want to do a 200 watt solar briefcase. And my understanding is that thing has a solar uh, charger, um, is that what they're called? I'm blanking now, even though I just said, yeah, charge controller. It has a, sorry for the train. It has a charge controller built in. And so my understanding then is I can, if I can free up a space here on the bus bars, I can just wire it into the bus bar like I do these charge controllers and then have the briefcase, you know, wired in directly that way and charging as well. Hopefully that makes sense. It makes sense to me. Please, somebody, let me know what you think about that. <laughs> um, and I will, if I remember, uh, I'll try to link that briefcase in the description. Uh, okay, what else we got? So then the last two slots are the, I just got the new Orion XS uh, 12 volt, 12 to 12, 50 amp chargers. I am running two of them uh, because I can. And... I have the dual alternator option on my transit, dual alternator, dual battery. So I figured it'd be super nice if I could just have both of those so where I can really get a lot of charge out of uh, turning the vehicle on and idling it for a little while. So that's why I'm doing two of those. I don't really have any questions with those. I think I've got it figured out. I did learn that um, they don't really like four gauge which is pretty beefy but that's the cable I ran and so um, I'm buying a roll of, of uh, six gauge to run from the batteries to these chargers I have no idea who that is so um, what was my other question I'm trying to I guess another question is um, I with the shunt I purchased where did it go the uh, smart monitor battery monitor thingamajig but i also got this smart dongle ve.bus smart dongle is that uh unnecessary do i not need both because they both essentially serve the same function in a different way I, I i'm a little confused there um i'm hoping that they both kind of work together in, in getting me just a whole bunch of information that frankly i'm probably not going to know anything about but the more information I can have on my phone about this system and about any potential issues or faults or, you know, whatever it might tell me about, the more the better, right? I I, I really, really, really would love to have uh, just a whole bunch of um, safeguards. So um, let me know if anybody knows if that's kind of redundant systems between these two or um, if it makes sense to actually do both of them and. If you know, for whatever reason, I'd be curious why. Uh, okay, um, yeah, I think that generally covers the main uh, setup. I, I've got over here my little 110 uh, fuse panel, breaker panel, and then a few outlets wired around. I still need to wire that in. Um, I'm working on my shore power right now, wiring that into the inverter. <sighs> what other questions do I have? I think that's it. Let me go double check. So I guess my last uh, sort of final big question is turning it all on. I've wired the batteries into the bus bar. I'll add the shunt. I'll get, I've got a little cable coming for the smart dongle. I'm going to have all the sort of monitoring equipment up and running. Um, I haven't flipped these disconnect switches yet. So effectively the batteries are separated from the inverter. Um, but I need to switch it on at some point. So uh, if anyone has any recommendations, obviously I need to get these mega fuses in. Um, I'll get those sorted hopefully with your guys' help. Uh, I did read that um, something once that I remembered, thankfully, about having to do a chassis ground for the inverter, which I have not done, so I'll make sure to get that taken care of. Um, I also learned that there's a little on switch for the inverter. I didn't even know that. That's cool. 
But yeah, my goal tomorrow, I've got a buddy of mine that's going to help me out. He does car stereo uh, wiring. Shout out to Provo Beast Audio Installation. He's got an amazing YouTube channel. Uh, he's actually going to be putting up soon a video of my transit trail stereo installation. So I'd recommend going to subscribe to him and keep an eye out for that. Um, he's going to be helping me out. I'd love to power the system on. So um, I'd love to have the... The batteries connected to the inverter and to have that just you know up and running and then I'm also going to um, get the solar chargers hooked up and solar charging the inverter and basically just keeping the battery bank charged um, a little bit later on probably not tomorrow but maybe I'm gonna get my battery chargers hooked up as well um, and then eventually kind of just get all the rest of it sorted as far as the all the little 12 volt stuff that I have yet to wire up um, the the, sh the um, shore charger shore connector 110 um, all that other stuff is kind of you know next up but for now I need to turn the dang thing on and I'm nervous so um, if anyone has thoughts on things that I maybe should double, triple, quadruple check, I'd appreciate it. Um, and and ideas as to maybe if, yeah, if I've done something incorrectly or if I've uh, done something a weird way and there's another way you would recommend doing something, please let me know before I uh, potentially waste a lot of money and uh, blow my van up. So... Again, thank you for the help. Like I said, this was more of just like me trying to reach out to anybody who knows this stuff and get some help. And maybe, you know, you learned a thing or two about some ideas about how to do a system. I'm pretty happy with how it all turned out generally. Um, I think I spent quite a bit more than I needed to, just especially in this stuff is, yeah, way too expensive. Um... But, you know, overall, I, I, I prefer overkill. I prefer the the two solar chargers, the two bus bars, the two batteries. You know, like, I like having a little bit of uh, the, the, the safeguards. You know, that's the word I guess I keep using. Um, and so the the safer the system, the better for me. The, the less I'm going to be worried and anxious about it on the road, especially when I'm leaving it parked somewhere and I'm going on like a multi-day backpack or something I just want peace of mind so um, any comments thoughts suggestions are appreciated and yeah see you later